It is the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. We're here every single day from 5 to 6 talking about the local issues that matter to you most and taking your phone calls at 800-222-KABC. 1-800-222-5222. We take your emails as well. I try to read and respond to every single one. Some of them we read on the air at randykabc at gmail.com. That's randykabc at gmail.com. It is Friday. It is happy hour. Today was dubbed the traffic day from hell because you have the World Series that is starting right now, actually. You've got a Laker game tonight. You've got a USC game. You've got a high school football game at SoFi. I believe there's a soccer match somewhere. And then you've got con- Concerts at the Inuit Dome and the Kia Forum, as well as all the other major events that are going on in Southern California. But I think the word got out enough that a lot of people who weren't going to any of those events said, I'm staying home today because traffic looks bad. But in my opinion, at least me looking at the uh, traffic maps, it doesn't look any worse than it usually is on a Friday. In fact, my commute home from the radio station, which I was anticipating, I might have to call in to do the 5 o'clock show because it's going to be so bad it's going to take me more than two hours to go 17 miles from Culver City to the Valley. But that didn't happen. I actually got all the way to Ventura Boulevard by like 3.35 and I had to stop into Gelson's to get some groceries for tonight. And it wasn't too bad. And right now, obviously around downtown LA and Dodger Stadium, it looks pretty terrible. Speeds as low as 15, 10 miles an hour, but That's how it usually is on a Friday. The 405 even doesn't look as bad as it usually does. It looks bad, but I've seen it a lot worse than a lot of Fridays. But if you're stuck in some hellish traffic that I don't know about, if your commute feels a lot more awful today, you are welcome to call an event at 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. But look, I, I realize the reality of the situation I am going up against a Dodgers-Yankees World Series today, so there may be a few people that are listening to this on a podcast later on, so I'm not going to sit here and talk about traffic all day long. What we do on Fridays is we talk happy hour. Happy hour is our weekly celebration of food, of drinks, of adventure, of travel. I look forward to it every week, although sometimes the entire week I'm like, what am I going to do for happy hour? What am I going to do for happy hour? And I start really stressing about it because I always want to make these shows different and interesting. I could start doing repeats and we could do a pizza show again every month and I'd probably get calls, but I'm trying to branch out, trying to do so many different things because there are so many different categories, whether it's the foods we love, the drinks we enjoy consuming, or the places we like to travel. And I really have a lot of fun with it. So today I actually want to go through what I happened to make last night, because last night I made something that I have never made before, and it was a runaway success. Now, I have a repertoire of meals that we go through on a regular basis, and there's probably 30 or 40 that we rotate with. So I have the stuff that I know that they'll be good. I know how to make them. Don't even need to look up a recipe. But every once in a while, it's time to branch out. It's time to try something good. And My thought process lately is try to clear out the fridge, try to clear out the freezer as often as possible. If I have something that I've been saving for a while in the freezer, it's time to defrost it. It's time to use it. So a couple months ago, I had ordered a whole bunch of crab for my friends at Nordic Catch because they have fantastic fresh crab. And we were going to do a hand roll night with some friends. Those friends ended up canceling. So no big deal. I put the crab in the freezer. So now I know I have it there, but I'm starting to think of, I got to make room in that freezer for a very specific reason. I need a lot of room in my freezer so I can get those Lou Malnati's gluten-free pizzas because we love having those in the fall and in the winter. So my thought is, okay, I got to use up this crab. And we've done it with hand rolls and it was really great. We could do it with a crab salad and I'm sure that would be really great. But now that we're getting into fall and now that we're getting into those comfort food months... It's time to start thinking about soups. It's time to start thinking about stews. And I don't know about you, but I am a soup guy. I'm so much of a soup guy that I drink bone broth every morning. I'll tell you about that later. But I started thinking, even though I've never tried it, 
I mean, I've had it before, but even though I've never tried to make it, what if I did a crab bisque? And that sounded really good to me. So I looked up a couple different recipes, and usually what I do is I'll Google crab bisque recipe, look at a couple of different ones, kind of get an idea of what I want to do, what are some of the ingredients I should think about, and then I will usually go to whichever one either looks the most appealing or sometimes, like if I'm trying to use up a whole bunch of celery, well, let me see if there's anyone that uses celery. And this is great. I had a whole bunch of celery to use up, had a whole bunch of crab to use up. So when I found a recipe that had crab, that had celery, I was good to go. So this is great. This is another of my world of immersion blender soups, which if you don't have an immersion blender, you need to get one. They're great and they're a lot of fun. Make sure you get a higher quality one. You don't have to spend a lot of money. The one that I have, I think I got from Sir Latab for 40 bucks, 50 bucks. I used to have a cheaper one for like 30 bucks, but it broke after a year. But I love having an immersion blender. I love taking so many vegetables, packing them into a soup, and then blending them up to the point where you don't realize they're there. It's good times. So this one was really simple. I sauteed up onion and celery. I got my garlic ready to go. I have a garlic press. Highly recommend it. I'm not the most accurate chopper. I'm not that great with a knife. I can do it, but... I can't do it nearly as pretty as my wife does. So a garlic press, which is this little clamp you put in your hand, and it takes the garlic and puts it into little minced pieces immediately. It's such an easy thing, and it makes your life so much easier. All I have to do is peel the garlic and go. And so I've got my celery, I've got my onion, I've got my garlic, and then i got a tube of Italian tomato paste. So after I saute up all that, put in the tomato paste, saute all that together, I deglaze with a little white wine. I was going to pair this crab bisque with a Chardonnay. So I used a little bit of this Chardonnay that we got from Rath up in the Santa Lucia Highlands Monterey area. We got it at their tasting room in Carmel, which is just fabulous and delightful and happy. And then the recipe called for a little flour. As you know, I mostly cook gluten-free because my wife has a gluten allergy, but gluten-free flour worked in that. So kind of thicken that up a little bit. And then just needed to add four cups of broth. Now I make my own broth at home. And I'm kind of a nut about it. I I have no problem buying store-bought broths, but I really love the idea of zero waste. And whenever we're using onions, well, there's lots of onion skins and parts of the onion that don't end up getting used. The stem, celery, you're obviously not using the bottom of it. Carrot, you're not using the ends of that. So what we like to do whenever we're chopping vegetables for our meal preps of the week or any of our dinners is put a lot of those, you know, parts that are just going to get thrown away, put them in a Tupperware container. When that container gets full, it's time to make a broth. And usually what we have done in the past is whenever we're making anything that has bones, whether it's a rotisserie chicken for a chicken salad or for a chicken soup, or we're having pork chops or something that's got a bone in it, I save the bone, try to wash it as good as I can, and then put it in the freezer. So when I want to make a broth, I'm good to go. So... We will make our own broth. And what we've done for a while is we'll just put it on the stovetop and let it simmer and simmer and simmer. I really am into bone broth. I really like the benefits of bone broth. And so you kind of need to simmer for 12 to 24 hours. I don't usually go more than 12 because I don't feel that comfortable with sleeping with the stove on. But I got to tell you, in the last week, I have had a game-changing moment because I've been thinking about getting a pressure cooker for a really long time, and I saw one at Sir Latab that I really like. It's from Breville, and it's a fast, slow cooker, so it also is going to replace our aging, very old, needs-to-get-replaced crock pot. So I've been making broth in this thing, and I've done it twice, and it does it in two hours. And then I went to Sprouts, and I bought these these beef bones, these beef marrow bones that I just put a couple in with all of my leftover vegetable scraps, even the onion skins, the papery onion skins, the garlic. I put some ginger in there as well. Anything that was going to get thrown out, I put in the stock pot inside the pressure cooker and let that go for two-plus hours, and the flavor is incredible. And then my wife... That's six months ago. She discovered these things called soup cubes, which are like gigantic ice cube trays. So we pour the broth in those. We freeze the broth. So whenever we need broth for rice or broth for beans or broth for soup, we have it ready to go. And homemade broth is just going to taste better if you know what you're doing. 
I add some aromatics, so I've got my vegetables, I add some peppercorn, some salt, and then a bay leaf, and I like to do a little apple cider vinegar. I think that gives it a really nice flavor profile. I also sip the bone broth in the morning. I'm not a coffee person. I'm a bone broth person. It has worked for me. I don't really eat in the morning. I'm kind of an intermittent faster. That's another topic for another day. So pour in my broth in my mixture of the onion and the celery and the tomato paste and the flour and the garlic, and then let that simmer for a good half hour. Now, I'm real lucky in that the crab that I get from Nordic Catch, it's already peeled, which is the most annoying part of crab. And this is fresh crab. This isn't fake crab. So I just put that in a bowl and I kind of shred it with a fork. And it's already easily shreddable. So I'm very lucky with that. And it's nicer quality than lump crab. But lump crab will work fine in this. So after I simmer my soup half hour, then I take my immersion blender and blend everything together. So you get that kind of, you get that bisque, you get that, it's kind of thicker than it would be a regular soup broth, but it's got all those veggies in it. And then you dump in a little bit of cream. You dump in that crab, let that heat up for a good five minutes, put some parsley in it at the end. I always like to add just a tiny bit of acid at the end of any cook. So I just put another tiny drop of that wine in there. And you can see the picture at Randy K A B at Randy Wang Radio on Instagram. I have never made this before, and we both went back for seconds. It was so good. Now, because it was crab, because it's that you know that seafood flavor profile, I thought this is going to go great with Chardonnay, and it was. The pairing with the Chardonnay was perfect. But while we were cooking, and my wife was watching TV, we wanted a Pinot to drink beforehand, and that paired well, too. We still had some. Had a Costa Brown up in the Sonoma Coast area, a Pinot Noir, and that paired nicely as well. It's not too overpowerful. One thing I forgot to mention, and I had to go specifically to the grocery store because I didn't have it, and I was like telling my wife, oh, I could cheat this, but the recipe called for not just salt and pepper, but Old Bay. And I didn't have any Old Bay, and I was like, oh, I'm sure I could recreate that with you know the spices that we have here. I'm glad I went with the Old Bay. It really added to the flavor. So, yeah, I made crab bisque last night, and I'm so excited to make this for friends, to make this for family. I know my dad's a big crab bisque guy, and it was really, really great. And I love that we're getting into the soup season. This is just one of the soups that is now going in the repertoire, and today is going to be my celebration of soup. And we're going to talk about some of the soups that I like to make. I'll tell you my favorite soup to order that I have not tried to make at home, but one day... One day, I'm going to try to do it, but hey, if uh, you are a big soup person, if there's a soup you love making at home and you want to participate, you want to play along in this Happy Hour Friday, you can give me a call at 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. Your favorite soup recipe to make at home, your favorite place to get soup, your favorite kind of soup, because we're getting to that time of year where it's all about the soups and all about that warm, fuzzy feeling that you get. So I'm talking soup today. If you want to talk with me, 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. I'm going to tell you about my black bean soup recipe, my wife's butternut squash recipe, enchilada soup chili, and I'll tell you about my biggest soup fail, my biggest cooking fail in my life. 800-222-KABC is the phone number. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Happy Hour Friday on Talk Radio 790 KABC. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. It's Happy Hour Friday, and we're taking your phone calls at 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. I made the greatest crab bisque of my life last week, and it's got me excited about soup season. I'm going to tell you my favorite soup recipes, but if you're a souper, you like making soup at home, tell me your favorite soup to make at home, or maybe you got a place that you like to get soup in Southern California. I love soup. Soup makes me happy. I'm going to be really comfortable in my 80s. 800-222-KABC is the phone number. 1-800-222-5222. Let's go to Kevin on the 5. Kevin, hello. How you doing, Randy? Doing great. Hey, so what I do is I take my leftover brisket, and I chop it into good-sized cubes, and then I'll throw it in the... It's a power pressure cooker, but I use the slow cook. I'll pour in two cans of two containers of beef broth. I'll throw in some carrots chopped up, and then I'll put in some either some rustic potatoes or Idaho potatoes chopped up. And I'll let that slow cook for about eight to ten hours. After that, I start throwing in the Italian squash, the onions, the bell peppers, and the also I 
at the very beginning, I also put in freshly chopped garlic as well. But I throw a little more chopped garlic in there to top it off and let that cook for probably about another six more hours. And it's, it's good to go. It really works good when it starts to get colder. That sounds like happiness in a bowl. That sounds so refreshing and good. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good weekend. You too. Thanks so much for the call. Appreciate it. I also love that he found a use for leftover brisket. Look, I love brisket so much. One of the first uh, happy hour shows we did that was specifically on a food topic was brisket, and we'll be doing it again. But one of the issues with brisket is when you make brisket at home, and let's say you're a family of four, or even a family of two, which my wife and I are, brisket, the smallest one you're going to find is 12 to 14 pounds. And at some point, you just can't eat it all the time. So you either have to give it to friends. I have a whole bunch of neighbors that I pass up bowls of brisket to. My old boss at the radio station, Drew Hayes, I give him a little taster. But I love the idea of incorporating it into soup. That sounds incredible. And that's a guy who does zero waste right there. I love it. We're talking soup today. Why not? 800-222-KABC is the phone number. 1-800-222-5222. Let me tell you off the bat, I couldn't tell you a place that I go to for a specific soup except for one major exception. There is one category of soup that I hold in the highest regard. I think it is the miracle soup. I have to have it. I crave it if I get sick, which I don't get sick very often, probably because of all the bone broth. But I... Love pho. Pho, Vietnamese soup, is my favorite thing to have when I'm sick. It, I swear it makes me feel better immediately. If I'm congested, it clears that up. There's a little place around the corner called Pho 99. Love that place. I go there. But everywhere, has a, everywhere you go in Southern California, there's a little Vietnamese pho place, and you can get some good pho. One day, I want to have the ability to to make that at home. But there are so many ingredients that just you don't see at regular grocery stores, whether it be the gangal or, you know, the the anise and all these other things. I'm a little intimidated by it. But one day I want to do it because I love making that soup. I love drinking that soup so much. What I'll do when I'm sick is I get a pho and I get an extra broth just so I can get two soups out of it because it's really just for the soup. But hey, if you got a soup recipe you want to share on the radio station, now's your opportunity to do so. I'm going to share mine, 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. Let's go to Marie in Mission Viejo. Marie, hello. Hey there, Randy. I have a very, very simple Italian, old-fashioned uh, recipe. I'm going home right now, exhausted from a terrible week. And I'm going home to make orzo pastina with butter, lots of it, and lots of fresh grated Parmesan cheese. That's it. That's all it takes, and you've got to have it in a bowl. That sounds like the comfort food right there. Absolutely. My mom used to make it uh, when I was I hope you enjoy kid. it, and I, I hope you yeah. enjoy every drop of it, and I hope it makes your week a little better. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much. You too, Marie. Soup does make everything better. 800-222-KABC is the phone number. We're talking soup on this happy hour Friday, 800-222-5222. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790-KABC. It is the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790-KABC. We're here every single day from 5 to 6 talking about the local issues that matter to you most and taking your phone calls at 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222 to your emails as well at randykabc at gmail.com. It's Happy Hour Friday, and we're talking soup. I made a great crab bisque yesterday. I made a fantastic black bean soup on Monday. So now that we're getting into the soup season, I want to hear your favorite soup recipe piece that you make at home 800-222-KABC let's go to eric and orange eric hello hey randy thanks for taking my call i got a couple of soups one is a family favorite we make a potato fennel leek soup cut off all the green parts of the fennel and the leek uh, you chop them all up saute with some uh, butter add the chicken stock you know, simmer the potatoes then you get the uh, immersion blender and blend it all up I got three kids at home, and they ask every year in the fall, "Can you make some white soup, Dad?" It actually is like a, uh, like almost like mashed potatoes, but a soup. It's so good. 
That sounds incredible. And what a great way to sneak some veggies in there. That's exactly what my wife and I were thinking. Now, the horror story, though, this is uh, this actually <laughs> was from my childhood growing up. My dad is uh, somewhat of a, a frugal and creative cook. And while your, your last one of the other callers earlier was talking about using brisket, which sounds great, my dad decided he'd use up some leftover liver. And uh, I can tell you from personal experience, liver stew is no good. <laughs> my mom walked in no. after teaching and uh, she smelled it and said what is that we are not eating that let's go out to eat old liver is one of those smells that you just can't get out of your head once you've smelled it oh my goodness yeah that's exactly what we were thinking uh so that was that really made a very memorable impression i've never tried to uh inflict that on my kids uh, thanks have a great weekend Thank you so much, Eric. Appreciate that fennel leek soup with potatoes. Sounds incredible. The liver stew, not so much. Let's go to Frank in San Pedro. Frank, hello. Hey, Randy. Thank you for taking my call. Um, Hi, kids and my family love when I make fagioli soup, which is uh, uh, it, it, fagioli is a word, it's an Italian word, which means beans. So you need about a half a pound of great northern beans you let them soak for you know a good day so they get soft and everything and then i add uh one chopped uh onion uh celery uh, about three or four celery stalks all you know chopped up fine i add some uh garlic uh, all chopped up some chopped parsley and one ham hock you let it all boil together i also put in there uh some uh, red italian sauce you know like pasta sauce just a scoop of of that and it is absolutely delicious. Garlic salt and pepper to taste, and it is outstanding. It's a great, it's a great fagioli soup uh, that uh, I got the recipe from my family, uh, that are which are from Ischia, Italy, which is where I was oh, born. Oh wow, from. that's incredible, Frank. I'm looking at pictures of fagioli right now. I got to start making this because I'm always looking for something to do when I've got a whole bunch of carrots and celery lying around. This looks incredible. Oh, yeah, that's a perfect uh, ingredient for that, Randy. Uh, you, you're gonna I you're gonna it. love it, if you, especially with the ham hock or ham bone. With and then you scrape off the the ham and you add you know that's added to the soup, which gives it an incredible, incredible taste. You definitely know what you're doing around a kitchen. I love it, Frank. Thank you so much for the call. Call us again. Appreciate it. Richard in East Hollywood. Richard, hello. How you doing, Randy? Doing great. Hey, uh, don't be afraid of the the Vietnamese uh, noodles. It's pretty easy, actually. Oh, really? So you've made pho? I made it today, actually. Oh, now I'm really jealous. That's why I called in. (laughs) Okay. Well, tell me all about it. Okay. I, I learned to make the, the broth from this lady who's been doing it in Vietnam for 40 years or whatever, and she's had the same cauldron of that broth for so long. It's just darkened and matured and has all these different flavors. So everybody says that hers is the best. So what I do, I, I, I make the sauce. Or the the broth, uh, you use fish sauce, uh, oyster sauce, uh, you know, regular soy sauce, some lime, uh, a little bit of seafood uh, oil, and you start boiling that up. And when you get the flavor that you're looking for, you know, now you store that. Now you you, you buy a top ramen thing and you just throw away that sodium packet and you, you, you chop up some baby bok choy, some bean sprouts, some green onion, some shrimps, some jalapeno, some basil, and you just do the noodles and then put it all together, and it's just to die for. <laughs> and, oh, the egg. I forgot the egg. To get that really colorful oh, yeah. egg thing, if you've been to spa places, uh, Six minutes boiling feverishly, and you get that perfectly golden, not quite runny, but definitely not hard boiled. And it's it's just to die for. 
you have now inspired me to the point where I shouldn't be afraid. I need to do this. I am going to make my own pho this season, and you're the inspiration, Richard. That sounds incredible. Well, especially because you've been so aggressive on all these other things. I go, how can you be afraid of a little pho? He'll master this in no time. <laughs> It's one of those things where you're not good at it until you try it, and then you realize, oh, this was no big deal, well, and you, you know go. what? I shouldn't be afraid at go. all. Uh, exactly. And I, I didn't call for it, but if you got time for me, I could give you a recipe for a good comfort stew. Oh, of course. Yeah, give it to me. Okay. What I do is, it's kind of like the last guy with his leek thing, but mine's almost a potato and leek type thing, but I add... A, a can of tomato sauce, uh, uh, I got the leeks, potatoes, and I add uh, tomatillos. Ooh. And now, now you've got my attention. That, and then you throw, you start throwing in all your other vegetables, you know, three different colors, bell peppers, onion. And that's boiling down, you know, it's making a good thing. And then you got two rows of posca kielbasa. Chop those into bite-sized pieces, throw that in. And when you serve this, don't let people get to it because they'll start eating all the post kielbasa and it'll just be vegetables left. So you got to <laughs> monitor it. Yeah, when my wife starts making something like sausage or kielbasa, I go into the kitchen and I say, this is no longer a safe space for me. I have to leave. Exactly. <laughs> like one of I'll my just girlfriends, keep picking at it till it's gone. I, I, I let her get in there, and she ate every damn thing of the poster kielbasa, and there was none left. I go, what the f***? Excuse my language. Oh. <laughs> uh, make sure we dump that, Adam. Thank you so much. Richard, thanks so much for all that. that. We really appreciate it. I got it. We did. We dumped it. People just feel so comfortable. I love it. Don't you worry. That's what the delay is for. Got to make sure I get that one out of the podcast. 800-222-KABC is the phone number. 1-800-222-5222. We're talking soup recipes on the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Happy Hour Friday. Talk Radio 790 KABC. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC. If you'd like to email us, you could do so at randykabc at gmail.com. Tom writes in and says, if you're looking for Asian vegetables or anything Asian for that matter, go to 99 Ranch Market on Sepulveda in Van Nuys. I know exactly where that is. I used to live right around the corner. Let's go to Jose in the Valley. Jose, hello. Hey, Randy. How are you, bud? Doing great. Awesome. Yeah, you're, uh, we're neighbors anyway. Uh I call about beef stew, Latino style. I don't know if you ever had oh. that before, but uh, tell me all yeah, about it. Uh, yeah, there's uh, chunks of meat. You know, you go to the supermarket, Latino market, especially uh, uh, beef uh, stew. They call it it's chunks of meat, and then you throw some uh, beef uh, bones in it. Now, this this thing is full of veggies, man. You know, you're talking about green beans, chunks of uh, cabbage, carrots. Uh, yaka and even corn in it, you know? So, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, what this soup, once it's done, and especially uh, the, the day after, it's, it's even better when you heat it up, especially when you you have a hangover, dude, this, this is, this is going to cure you. So, you know, I know you like to drink a little bit, but. Uh, this is the recipe for, for the next day, uh, hangover. Uh, it's All right, I'm going to keep that yeah. in mind specifically for when I drink too much, but that sounds really great. And yucca, I never put yucca in anything. I love that. Another reason oh, to go to specifically man, yeah. Latino market. Yeah. You got to try that out. You go to Vallarta, you see it, they make it, but don't try it. Their soup is no good. You got to make it at home. It's, 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 it's something different. You know, it's, uh, it's a it's a Latino recipe that uh, we've had for years and years. You know, some people call it beef stew, but to me, beef stew is different than soup. This is more liquidy and and it tastes just awesome. Better the next day. I love it. Thank you so much for the recommendation, Jose. Appreciate it. That one's going on the list, especially because uh, I don't get hungover too often, but when I do, I'm a mess. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC.
It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC. It's Happy Hour Friday, and we're talking soups. Now, what we made earlier in the week has become one of our mainstays because it is so full of vegetables, but you'd never know it. It is so flavorful and just incredible. It's our black bean soup recipe. So you take equal parts carrots, onion, and celery, and bell pepper. Saute all that up, and then you're going to pour in either four cans of black beans, or if you've got a bag of dried black beans and you soak those, you could throw that in there as well. By the way, pressure cooker, amazing for dried beans. It can do a whole bag in like 20, 30 minutes. I am wowed. Usually takes a whole day. So you simmer all that. You do about four cups of broth. And I like to add in a whole bunch of cumin, chili powder. It's all getting immersion blended up after about 30 minutes of simmering. And then I like to finish with a little squeeze of lime juice. And then I dress it with avocado and cilantro, cotija, which Trader Joe's has a fantastic cotija right now. Don't skip on that. And sour cream. And it is such a winner. If you need it to get a little hotter, oh, I add jalapeno as well. If you want it a little hotter, you can add some hot sauce. But, oh, it is so fi- it's so fulfilling, so comforting. And because of the carrots and celery and the bell pepper, it's pretty darn healthy. My wife makes an incredible butternut squash soup where she roasts the butternut squash until it is super soft and then blends it with some sautéed apple and a serrano pepper. And you toast the little seeds, and that one's always a good winner. But can I tell you about my biggest soup fail, which is also my biggest cooking fail ever? This is the first year I got into cooking, and I got into cooking when I met my wife. Before that, I just wasn't into it. I didn't think I could do it. And then my mother-in-law said, if you could read, you can cook. So my wife told me that, so I started learning how to cook. And one of the things you start doing when you don't know what you're doing is you use a crock pot. Crock pots are really easy, and guess what? Crock pots are really great for soups and stews. So... We were craving, I think one of us was getting sick. We were craving chicken noodle soup. And chicken noodle soup can be really easy in a crock pot. You take your mirepoix, your celery, your onion, your carrot, and you take uh, you know chicken breast or chicken thighs, whatever you want to do, and you get that all going in, and then you get your noodles. Now, I had gotten these, I think they were called Papa Darley. There were these garlic Papa Darley noodles from Trader Joe's. And I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't realize I needed to cook them separately and then put the soup over the noodles. So I put the noodles inside the crock pot for the last hour and they kind of disintegrated and they ended up turning into this like magical, extra flavorful broth. It ended up working out really well. And then you shred the chicken and it turned out to be one of our favorite things. Except one day I got a little big for my britches and I thought to myself, you know, what can make this soup even better. Instead of using boneless, skinless chicken thighs, what if I used bone-in, skin-on thighs that I did not cook beforehand, did not sear beforehand? And let's just say that when you're crock-potting bone-in, skin-on thighs, you get something that's real rubbery, that does not shred, that grosses out your wife to even think about chicken noodle soup 10 years later. I ruined chicken noodle soup for her. And I'll never, ever forgive myself for that one. But luckily, I got a repertoire of a whole bunch of other soups that make up for it. But yeah, I'm not allowed to make chicken noodle soup. And that's 10 years running because I grossed her out. But you know what? It's okay. We all have cooking fails. There's nothing wrong with it. You just pick yourself up and you make something else. Thank you all so much for keeping me company. It's always such a blast to do this with you every single day, especially these Friday shows. Have an incredible weekend. We'll see you back here Monday for another News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC.